if you have purchased an Arcam AV receiver or maybe home theater processor for your system, I'm guessing there's a good chance that you have music sound quality high on your priority list. And I think you've chosen wisely. The Arcam AVRs 10, 20, 30, 11, 21, 31, 40, 41 can all sound absolutely fantastic for music if you set them up very well. And I would guess that it would be the same if you've chosen recently to buy a JBL or an audio control or maybe a lexicon because they all have the same benefits. They all work in a very, very similar way to each other. And again, I think you've chosen wisely. But there are definitely ways and methods and means that you can achieve better music sound quality from them. And in this video, I'm going to give you my five suggestions. Five top tips really are supposed to achieve the best music sound quality from an Arcam, JBL, Lexicon, etc. So suggestion and tip number one is going to be set up calibration and optimization. And of course, these are all very, very obvious things, but just because they're obvious doesn't mean that we shouldn't, I suppose, you know, focus on them and, and make light of them. The setup, the calibration and optimization is the most important part of setting up a home theater system to achieve the best sound quality and the best music sound quality. Again, this is obvious. And by setup, I mean the speakers that you choose to buy, the subwoofers that you choose to buy, where you place them in the room and the room itself. Of course, all of these things are going to be hugely influential to the sound quality that you will achieve. And if you've bought a JBL or an RCAM or an audio control, processor or home theater receiver, well then one of the big benefits, the USPs of those products is that they feature Dirac Live. And that with nearly all of the models that you'll purchase, they come with a full frequency Dirac Live license. So really you should be taking advantage of this, using Dirac Live to its maximum, to its maximum potential, or using it to achieve the maximum sound quality that you can from the speakers and subwoofers in your room. So number two, it's just a setting that you can engage. Go into the menu, go into the input configuration, come down until you see the option stereo mode. And here you have four different options to choose from. And my advice to you is to choose left and right plus subwoofer. Left and right plus subwoofer will run your front left and right speakers, essentially as in just pure stereo speakers. So full range, and it will also then engage the subwoofer. And if you've set the system up correctly, taken the calibration and optimization stage into account, well then you'll be achieving the maximum capability of the left and right speakers. Adding the subwoofer, calibrating the system correctly can help to enrich and just embolden the overall sound, which I think makes music much more palatable, much more enjoyable. Now there is one situation where this might cause an issue, and that is where you have maybe calibrated the system to be based hot or bass, extra bass loud for movie soundtracks. And I actually think there's nothing wrong with this. I actually think this is a really nice way to go for a bit of extra bass kickery and a bit of bass madness for movies. But very cool is that within the Arcam, there is a setting that will allow you to adjust the subwoofer level specifically really for music or really for two channel sources. You go into the Arcam menu, go into input configuration and scroll down until you see a slider for sub stereo. What it really allows you to do is tune the subwoofer level to perfectly support the main speakers for music listening. So if you've got really big and bassy main speakers, well then maybe you need a little bit less subwoofer. If you've got smaller satellite speakers, well then you're naturally going to need more subwoofer. So the left and right plus subwoofer not only has the benefit of this level of control, but it also has the benefit of the calibration and optimization stage. So time alignment, Dirac Live calibration for frequency and subwoofer integration and level. So <laughs> this is a very complex, fantastic way to set up an Arcam or similar AV product for music because you have a fantastic amount of fine control to achieve ah, an outstanding overall sound quality. Now number three is definitely going to be a personal preference use case. And this one is definitely all based around number one, calibration optimization stage being just right. Now within an Arcam, you have multiple 
up mixing sound modes. But for music, they all sound absolutely terrible, totally terrible, regardless of what you do with the calibration, except one. And the one that I think that sounds absolutely fantastic is multi-channel stereo. And multi-channel stereo does a very similar thing to left and right plus subwoofer. It just plays all of the channels within the system full range or as they've been calibrated and engages the subwoofer as well. And providing you've calibrated the system properly and optimized it properly, the sound, the stereo sound stage does not change too much. What you get is a larger, more grand, more enveloping, more immersive, and generally a bolder and richer sounding version of the same music that you're listening to. It becomes very immersive and can become very bold and rich depending on how the system is calibrated. So much so that when you turn multi-channel stereo off, the two-channel version you've just been listening to, really enjoying, ah, doesn't sound nowhere near as impressive anymore. That is how well this multi-channel stereo mode has been done. But I personally really like multi-channel stereo. Lots of my calibration customers use it. In fact, they were the ones that showed it to me in the first place. It's a fantastic mode. It's definitely worth some experimentation. And just, yeah, it's a different way to listen and quite a fun way to listen. So number four, is definitely going to be controversial with some people, but I'll press on anyway. So number four for me would be to experiment, to try and to improve your overall systems, what I call the system foundation. And by that I mean the power, the power quality going to the AV products, and maybe even the cables linking everything together. Now, <laughs> I'm fully aware that that pushes, for some people, things straight into snake oil territory, which is fine if you feel like that, then, then maybe overlook this stage. But I feel like there are other people that might be interested to experiment. And I feel like now is a great time to experiment because you've got the system set up and calibrated really well and optimized really well. And also you're either using mode two and or three to give you the, you know, the best music experience that you can get. So now is the time to experiment further. And if you can find benefit and gains by looking at the system's foundation, fantastic, maybe consider spending money here. If you don't find any gains, don't find any benefits, of course, don't spend any money. So that leads me to number five. And number five might actually be even more controversial than number four. And I know there will be some people that strongly disagree with me straight away. But please bear in mind, I get to see a lot of things. I get to experience a lot of things. I get to see a lot of people's methods of setting up their RCAMs and other systems. And sometimes it's through that experience that you get to see things a little bit differently. Some of my calibration customers choose to use an external music source and an external DAC that they then feed analog into their RCAM, AVR, that signal is then converted from analog back to digital to have all of the direct live correction and optimization stages applied. And that signal is, of course, then converted back to analog again, sent to the internal amplifiers and plays out through the system. So there is an additional analog to digital stage within the process that technical people would say that makes no sense. It makes no sense to do that. But yet when I speak to those calibration customers, they all say the same thing. They think the system sounds better using the ex external source and DAC than without. And I've never ever questioned that. That's their system, that's their choice. But one system recently, one calibration recently, I had a little bit of extra time and the calibration was I was completing was for a chap that used to work in the hi-fi industry. And he had told me that he had found better results using his computer as the source, feeding into a Marantz, a really very well-built Marantz headphone amplifier and DAC, and then feeding into his Arkham AVR30. So we did a lot of listening comparisons, always using Tidal, keeping everything exactly the same. And, and he was right. His system sounded better using the external source, his computer, and the Marantz DAC, essentially. So that was interesting to me. So I went on a mission to try and calibrate his Arkham AVR 30 using the internal music streamer to sound as good, if not better, than the external solution. And I was able to easily achieve that and easily do that. But what was interesting was, as we was then comparing the internal streamer and DAC to the external streamer and DAC, bearing in mind that's still being converted and still going through the internal DAC, 
the sound, the difference, the sound difference of the external to the internal stayed the same. So as the internal sound got better, the external sound got better at the same rate. And I could not close the gap, no matter what I did. And I tried a good three or four times. So at that point, I just conceded and accepted the fact that it is possible to get a better music experience using an external source and DAC even though it's going through a conversion, even though it's going through all of the exact same calibration and through the exact same DAC within the Arcan. So I found that super fascinating. And let me just clarify what I mean by better sound. I mean bolder, richer, warmer, more, more lively, and more musical. Point number five is a suggestion to experiment. Maybe experiment with an external source, definitely an external source, feeding digital into the Arcan, but maybe take that one stage further by experimenting with digital sources, different quality digital sources, and maybe different sound profiles or different sound qualities of DACs. Really, really very interesting. And, uh, and this one totally goes against me. It totally goes against my technical brain of what I understand about how this process works. And yet, I cannot deny the sound quality difference that I've experienced. I cannot deny the experience that I've had. So those are my five suggestions or ways to get better music sound quality from an Arcam JBL audio control or Lexicon AV products. But I do have a sixth one for you, a bonus one. As of today, which is the 5th of January, 2023, out in Las Vegas at the CES show, there's a brand new technology from Dirac that's being demonstrated to the world for the first time. And I actually visited Dirac a few weeks ago out in Sweden and got to experience this new technology, an AB demonstration of it myself for the first time. It's very, very interesting. It's super clever, super technical, so much so that I really struggled to understand it and, and fully comprehend, not necessarily what it's looking to do, but how it's achieving it and the way it all works. And I think that technology will be rolled out to certain Dirac Live enabled hardware solutions at some point this year. So that's super fascinating, super interesting, but I need to learn more and I'm sure you will be keen to learn more about this as well. So the first of, I suppose, my learning sessions for this will be with a live interview with someone from Dirac on the 16th of February. 2023. So if you're new to the channel, now will be the ideal time to subscribe and keep a lookout for the videos because I'm going to create a number of videos throughout this year based around the new direct technology because it's fascinating to me. It's going to be very fascinating for you if you like or if you're into two channel music, it's going to be huge for that. And yeah, it's just generally very exciting. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something out of it, maybe something in amongst the five suggestions to maybe go away and experiment with or maybe just put into place for your system right now. Thank you very much for watching. 